Good morning, it's day two. Um, once again, didn't sleep amazingly, but it was all right. Got the drone of the M4 in the distance. Um, it's not the nicest of days so far. It's a bit chilly and a bit windy. There's Chris. How do you sleep, Chris? Uh, yeah, not brilliantly, but yeah. Not brilliant, but I don't know. not that bad. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do this morning is message Piao, the, the girl who gave us a lift, my friend, and ask her to bring me another SD card because annoyingly a lot of the footage that I've taken some of it has uh, been deleted it's a bit gutting actually so some, I got some cool things yesterday and they just won't be in the, in the film unfortunately hence why it might the first day might be not as long as it normally is um, I've got a, a scan disc memory card and I've googled it and apparently they're quite renowned for doing that and you know I'm no expert on memory cards so but I, you know it was a proper legit one and like it was a fair bit of money so it's just a bit annoying really so we're going to meet her and hopefully she can bring me a, a, a new one and hopefully I don't lose any more footage a bit gutting anyway this is our view quite nice didn't get disturbed in the night Oh man, it's proper raining. Typically, the one morning we wake up and there's no dew whatsoever. So perfect for packing our tents away. And then it starts to rain and our tents are soaked. So we're kind of just holding fire a little bit before we pack away. They're gonna be wet, but the trouble is, are we gonna miss the rain and are we gonna get wet ourselves when we walk? I think we're just, Probably gonna have to bite the bullet and get wet, unfortunately. Not the nicest of mornings, frustratingly. Oh well. Right, it's 10 to 8 in the morning. We've just packed up our tents and have just started walking again. The rain has stopped, thankfully, which is nice. It wasn't too bad packing our tents away. Um, gonna hopefully meet Piao soon for some SD card replacements water. and some water. Uh, one of the clips from yesterday that got erased unfortunately so we, we took this slight diversion because part of the hike was um, shut which led us to this farmer's field which we were kind of sort of walking directly across and there was this amazing hay bale on top of this trailer and I was like oh I need to go up there it's amazing like golden hour and if I get up there I can do a really cool panoramic shot with my drone got up there started flying my drone and then this farmer and his tractor came hurtling over like very angry going unbelievable what are you doing up there blah 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 I was like oh god it's so annoying I'm trying to get my drone back Chris started running away <laughs> Did it sound like Caleb from yeah he sounded like Caleb from uh, Jeremy Clarkson's farm but yeah, really annoying. So I actually filmed a little bit of that yesterday, which got erased, but I do have a little clip. Chris managed to film me on top of the thing. So I'll add that after this. Um, and apparently Chris also has found out that on the all trails map, it actually tells you how much of the route you've walked compared to what your tracker says, like or Google or whatever, or Strava. And we've actually only done 17 miles unlike the 20 that we thought we had so we've actually got to make up another three miles from yesterday annoyingly and look you won't be able to see it but there's about eight pheasants all running around actually now about 20 pheasants all running around what are you doing phil my 
we've just come slightly off route because the signposts were totally not there. Um, and we've come to this quite incredible gate, which just seems to be the main entrance to the uh, um, estate. However, they look locked. Um, so we don't know if we can get out. Uh, we might have to do some wall climbing in a second. Yeah. Um, they're, they're blatantly going to be locked, aren't they? They are. I mean, look at that though. I'm guessing that's the gatekeeper's house. Pretty incredible place to live. Locked. We might have to ring on the doorbell of this house and ask if they can let us out. We're not like, we haven't broken in because there was an entrance right from the other side. So we're okay to be here. Um, let's hope they're up. Do you want to try? Sweet. Someone there. I'm really sorry to tell you, we've always got such a way if we just can't get back on the path, we can't get out. No, the path, you're going to go down there, it's only about half a mile straight Did, down there. Do we have to get out here and we can walk along the way? No, not allowed to, there's security guys and everything, there's little cameras everywhere. Oh shit. Yeah. So yeah. That, that way and... Now, yeah, if you go straight down there, yeah. Yeah. so it's not that far, okay. it's only like... Oh, 600 yards or less than a thousand yards. We need yards. to sort of get to Old Sodbury. Yeah, yeah. If you get to that path, yeah. take a right, yeah. and that's like up, you go up a hill and you're perhaps at the. Oh, okay, we'll do you're that. Coming, you're coming to Old Sodbury by, right. so yeah. by the dog. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. Don't know if you heard that. You probably did hear that. Another blooming diversion, annoyingly. Um, so they said go up here and turn right? Yeah. It does go to Old Sodbury, which is where we're aiming for. Of the estate, and yeah. then we well, thought so we'd be able to get out. Come back here. down to this road, yeah. take a right, that's you'll find the Copsville Way signposts. Okay. And you'll come to a kissing gate, you'll come out of there, go up the road a bit, turn left, and that'll take you down to the right side. where they keep that. No, yeah. keep going right down, you'll see, you'll see a cattle grid. Okay. You, once you get that, if you turn right, you'll see there's posts there. Okay. The Way. And it's not, you can't, there's no way of getting out this way. No, mate, no, no. I can't. Look, see, security would kill me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just go back down. And yeah. If anyone says, say, say I was told sorry. to go back, and you know where yeah. you're going. Thank you. What is this to say? This is Donington Park. This is. Okay. I just they have the, the Donington Park there. The, the used to years ago, all used to be on this bank. Did it? But yeah, they used to have the super cross and all yeah. and stuff like that on there. But Amazing. That was just someone's house. Nice house. <laughs> exactly, it's a good good big garden they got. Yeah, uh, gardening today. Exactly, we've got like 23 acres of lawn to cut. Yeah. Like one of the sales reps come to for first and things like that, and he said, oh, well, how many lawns have you got to do? And he sort of went and told him his eyes lit out. People were in the air sort of thing. Do you have a team or is it just you? Yeah, well, we got groundsmen. We, there's five of us. We've got, I think it's 10 gardeners, which do the small stuff in, inside grounds, all the house and that. But, uh, there's a very feral few of us, there's 87. Like you've got oh, electricians, right. you've got plumbers, everything's in house look. Amazing. So they've all got their workshops, which they down in the yard. And uh, yeah, so Amazing. it's self sufficient, really. Mm. So, cool. yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, you so much. Much. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just down, if you get to the cow bridge, turn right. Yeah. Obviously, don't go over the cow bridge because there's a big gate in the way. But um, literally, as you get down to the end, you'll, you'll see the wooden post. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we just googled Doddington Park, where we are now, to see who lives here. It's, it's James Dyson, who owns obviously Dyson, the vacuum cleaner company. So yeah, we, we camped in his garden last night. I'm sure he won't mind. But yeah, it's lovely. Look at all these sheep in the grounds. So this one guy owns all of this. Incredible. Managed to escape Doddington Park finally. And look, the cows literally arrived as we arrived. There she is. All right. Thanks for coming. Oh, you're wet. Yeah, it's a bit rainy this morning. Uh, did you bring some water? I did. Oh, Thank you so much. Oh, you are the best. <laughs> oh. This one. The dog. Oh, hello. Hello. Missy, say hi! Hello! You're so cute! Hello! Hello! 
Hello. You're going to bark at me if I put this camera in your face? She doesn't like camera. Okay, no. we'll turn it off then. <laughs> so we're restocked with water. I've got a new SD card. Um, got my footage backed up on Piao's laptop. And uh, she's joined us for a walk. Hi. <laughs> and uh, what's she called? Missy. Missy. Missy's joined us as well. Missy the Cow lives about five minutes away, so it's actually really handy. Um, it worked out very nicely. And now the, the sun's coming out, stopped raining, and uh, yeah, all is good. beautiful house and that they sell honey they've obviously got beehives you can buy little Sodbury honeycomb for five pounds or the runny sort in a jar pretty nice just put your money in there isn't that cool missy yes it is missy say woo right go on go go woo missy woo i love you Ow. i love you no yeah. not interested I love this, uh, I love <laughs> So yesterday I was telling Chris about geocaches and they're basically like these little capsules that are left all around the world and uh, I think the point of them is that you leave a little gift or you take a little gift and you write a note. I think I've just come across one. This one in here. Have a look see what's inside. I, mean, I don't know if this is one but I'll have a look. Put this up here. Uh, wedge that in there. Yeah, right. A shell, a little uh, star, and a little Z thing. Let's see what's on the note. Yeah, look. People have written little notes. Kevin Max. I mean, I'm not going to read them, but. Basically, people have written when they found it and whatnot. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But we managed to stumble across one of those. See you later. See you later, alligator. <laughs> right, that's Piao gone. She joined us for a couple of miles, two or three miles, two miles. Um, we were five miles in. However, we did do that annoying loop around Doddington Park where we got a bit lost. Um, but it's still not raining. Um, I'd wish I'd put my waterproof socks on earlier. They're a little bit damp, but it could be a lot worse. Yeah, uh, probably gonna stop for a little bit of food in a minute, because um, I'm pretty hungry. Still got a little bit of Sunday race left, which is nice. Don't know how nice it's gonna be now though. But yeah, back on the trail. Well, didn't really leave it, but walking through some lovely little Cotswolds villages at the moment, some lovely houses. That's there, the old post cottage. Lady just came out, that's actually in someone's garden. She just came out and moaned at me and said, if you don't move on, I'll call the police. Which is nice. So we're now moving on. Carrying on of our hike. Pretty cool thing to have in your garden though. Feet dry? Uh, yeah, on my last pair of socks. Fifth pair of socks already. Yeah, look, this is Chris's drying system. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wet this morning. It was, it was. Yeah. Unexpectedly. Yeah. Morning. Just gone one o'clock, going up this massive valley, super steep. Oh, I'm absolutely shattered. Coming up to uh, 13 miles, so half marathon. But yeah, my feet hurt a lot. We're both struggling a little bit. We're going to hopefully get to Wooden Under Edge in um, about three miles, which is a bit of a big town, and hopefully. Um, we can charge some of our devices and stuff and 
maybe get a coffee or something, or a cake or whatever. But yeah, it's hard work. The weather's a bit grey. At least it's not, I mean, it's hot. It's not crazy hot, but yeah, it's a bit overcast, but cool track. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, yeah, it's hard work. Just walking for a field full of cows. They seem quite mellow, unlike some cows I've met in the past. But yeah, I don't think these are going to be charging us. So all the cows have decided to stand next to the gate. Having a wee. I think they'll be fine to walk through. Hopefully. Famous last words. Hey. Which one's a bull? He. He. So this one is a bull. Hey. Easy, steady. We made it. We're alive. <laughs> oh, thanks for not charging us. Uh, we've just had to have a little break. We've just done a hell of a slog um, for the past few miles. We're pretty relentless, to be honest. So, and we're both absolutely in pain, pretty much broken. But I just wanted to show you this. I've never shown you this before. I think it's kind of like a rite of passage for an adventurer if you have cream cheese. I like to call it the cream cheese jizz. Every time you open one of these, you get that. And if, I should have given it to Chris really to try out for the first time because every time someone does it for the first time, you can guarantee you'll get cream cream jizz all over your clothes. But I've done it enough time to know better. But yeah, thought I'd show, show you that. And I still haven't learned, look, just got some on my sock. I thought it was all out, but put up my shoe and spilt it everywhere. Lovely church. Just realized I was filming in my pocket for 25 minutes. Slightly annoying when you're trying to conserve batteries. Oh well. But we just reached the first major town of Wooten Under Bridge, I think it's called. Um, so we're 15 miles in, and I think we're going to try and find somewhere to rest for half an hour, charge some stuff, maybe eat some food. Yeah. So shortly we should we shall be doing that. Sorry, it's called Wooten Under Edge, not Wooten Under Bridge. But yeah, we've made it. It's quite nice. It's just up ahead there. Looking for a coffee shop, no doubt. Just come into a hiking shop because Chris has basically run out of clean and dry socks, so he's going to buy some socks. Two pairs of those. Two pairs. Didn't have any, um, didn't have any uh, waterproof ones, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like this is the only sort of hiking shop in Wooten. He's potentially going to buy some new boots. I think that's why he has wet socks, because his boots aren't particularly waterproof. Well, I think this might sort us out. That is a big portion. And Chris just asked the lady in the coffee shop if they had a tumble dryer so he could dry his socks. They live they live here, so they could have very well done. I mean you don't ask, you don't get the um, the ladies <laughs> just taken over the coffee shop for the ladies that were sat over there found it highly amusing that he asked a lady in a coffee shop if he could use the tumble dryer. They uh, said they made their day. It made their day. So at least he's done his bit for the uh, community.
This way. Right, that was nice. I mean, I didn't really need that meal, but um, well, I did because it's good for energy and calories and stuff. I've burnt way many calories today. Um, but yeah, I wasn't actually that um, hungry, but it's good. I'm just walking through Wooten now, nice little high street. Lots of hanging baskets. Yeah, we've just done 16 miles. We try and get to the halfway point if we can. It's gonna be a hell of a slog to get to 30 miles. I reckon we'll get to 27. Oh look, there's a grommet. I painted a uh, sheep like that. Sean the sheep and a melon one called Melanie. Check it out. By the way of Chris's foul language just two seconds ago, this is definitely the steepest section we've come across so far. Probably the steepest section I've encountered on any of the walks. It's really, really, really hard. And I've full topped up of water as well, so my bag's really heavy. Painful. That was one hell of a climb. But when you get to the top of these climbs, you're rewarded with a view. Hello. Oh, no. <laughs> I can still see the Severn Bridge. I could see that yesterday from almost the beginning. Seems like we, we can't escape it. But we uh, just passed the, I think she was an American, she sounded it. Um, she's doing the hike, but she's come from the other direction. And she's on day four. She's planning to do it in six days. But um, she looked pretty broken, to be honest. She was limping and hobbling a lot. Um, she also told us that there's 1,500 foot in elevation, I think. Chris knows more about that than I do. But yeah, crazy view. I might get the drone out. Okay, you know I said a few minutes ago it was 1500 foot elevation. Completely wrong, completely wrong. It's much more. It's actually 15,618 feet, which is just over um, half the height of Everest. And we're doing this in four days. And Everest obviously takes months to climb. Um, so yeah, that's just goes to show how hard this hike is actually, with lots of hills and stuff. Right, we're 20 miles in, which is where we finished yesterday. Our aim is to get another 10 miles in, so we get to 30 miles. Although it's uh, just about 10 to 5, which means we've probably got about 3 hours left of walking to do. So to get another 10 miles in is quite um, a task. Look at that. Really beautiful houses around here. Yeah, we're both flagging. Chris has got blisters. My feet, like they're about to explode. Um, I'm pretty tired. So these three hours will be fun. So I can keep changing into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. How far are you going? All the way to the um, Chris has just asked this kind family in this nice house if he can use their tumble dryer. He said he'd give them some money. Um, but they're willing to do it for free. We stopped here because they actually have free drinking water. Um, free drinking water. So kind of you. Right. Yeah, a legend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How long have you been? 
Uh, we moved. We moved it here in February. From. Uh, we were in Bristol. Okay. Oh, yeah. I still live in Bristol. Yeah. 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 yeah in Bristol. Right? Two bedroom terrace just off Ashley Down Road, sort of near the cricket ground. Oh yeah. yeah. Near Gloucester Road. Off yeah. Gloucester Road. Yeah. 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 So just off Gloucester Road. Yeah. Uh, this is. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd say this is a nicer location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty. Dream to live in Gloucester. Look at this proper old school milk. <laughs> In a bottle, not had yeah. that for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's still a good, still a good, still a right out here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we've just come up from Brighton. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Started in um, Bath. So you're doing the whole of the yeah. way. I'm trying to do it. To. Trying to do it in four days, but it's a bit of a slog. We're a little bit behind as well. Right. Um, yeah. Chris's wife is picking us up from Chipping Camden on Thursday, so we've got to try and get there for them basically. Yeah, so it's a, it's a slog, but uh, yeah. it's good. Didn't realise how the total elevation is 15,600 feet we found out today. So oh. it's uh, pretty hilly. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a climb out of here. Yeah. What a nice fella, whilst uh, Chris's socks are being dried in the tumble dryer. Nice cup of tea. So Chris is happy, he's got dry socks. And what I forgot to mention is that that was the first place we've managed to find water on the trail yet. So if you're doing this trail, make sure you got water or you know you can do what we've been doing and ask. Uh, there is a few petrol stations actually, so yeah, you can bike there and then that Wooten place you can buy it. But unlike the South Downs Way where there was several um, water fountains en route, or probably more than several, quite often actually, um, this doesn't seem to have it. Uh, but it does seem like a quite a recognised trail. We've seen quite a few other hikers and uh, people have been saying, oh, you're doing the Cotswold way. And uh, so can, in comparison to the Serpents Trail, it's a lot more recognised and well-known and popular. Oh, so not only was that one mother of a hill once again, um, Chris, show us this. This is our route. We've got to go all the way around here, all the way around there and up there. We could potentially just cross about across there that will save us so much time but we ain't gonna cheat we're gonna do it properly uh, look at the drip you see the sweat coming down my nose um, that's yeah, the right way yeah. this is the golf course the guy was telling us about um, yeah because we're a bit behind schedule to be honest so that little cut across would help us out quite a lot but if we go straight on yeah that would get us there yeah, we have to go around it this way. Okay, so yeah, look, we have to go this way. No, look at this actually though. Gives you, gives you two routes. Oh, so technically, we're not cheating. We're not cheating. Oh. Cotswolds Way. I'm taking the shortcut. <laughs> it's the alternative route. That's a massive result. You can either go to Dursley, which is two and three kilometres, or you can go to Dursley, which is three quarters of a three quarter. So technically, we're not. It's alternative route. That means it's part of the route. Let's do it. Not cheating. <laughs> not cheating. That's not that's cheating. I need at the end of the day. <laughs> well, I think that has really perked Chris up. To be oh, fair, yeah. to be fair, it's perked me up a bit as well. Not cheating. Not cheating. Just as evidence, look, Cotswolds Way. Not cheating. Not cheating. Just an extra bit of clarification on my walking EnglishWalkingMans.com trail. It's taken us this way, which is the way I would have gone had I have not been looking at all, all trails, which Chris is using. Um, so yeah, it's fine. Not cheating. I thought this trail was too easy, so I thought I'd have a little jog. You know, make it a little bit harder. actually the reason why I'm doing this is because running downhill just seems actually a lot easier. Walking down hills seems to be actually worse than walk, um, walking up hills, weirdly. Oh, and the quicker I get down this hill, the better. I think Chris is walking it, but I'm running it. Oh, no, the shortcuts. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to cheat. No, 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 don't cheat. No, you can't cheat. No. Wait, so what are you saying tonight? 
camping. Anywhere. Camping. Yeah, well, listen, I'm brilliant, mate. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. It's yeah. nice to be out there, isn't it? Thank yeah. you. It is. It is. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be out. Thank you very much. Yeah, God bless now. There we go. Thank you. Getting some support from the locals, which is always good. <laughs> um, so this, we're currently in Dursley. And this would be a great place if you needed supplies because there's lots of shops walking down the high street. But everything's closed, so not a great place for supplies if you come at this time. Uh, we also just walked past another old fellow earlier and he was like, oh, the hardest part's just about to come up now. And we're like, oh, really? And he was like, yeah, getting past this pub, you'll, it'll be hard to get past there. It's lovely in there. So that was quite funny, but yeah. There's another one, King's Head. Here's an interesting little fact for you. We've actually climbed higher than Scaffill Pike, the highest mountain in England, which is 3,208 feet. Just today. Just today, yeah. I just, sorry, I'm looking over there because there's an amazing view. Look at that. That is actually maybe one of the best views I've ever seen in the UK like for a vista wise <laughs> do you want me to lift this up Chris so you can go under here yeah, it's like a dog just crawl through yeah like say so he's going over this I mean, this is steep. Check this out. Ow! First time I've seen something like this on the trail. Like caveman. Camp here and pretend to be a caveman for the night. But that's a good rock climbing spot. Oh, we're uh, about 25 miles in, so coming up to a full marathon. We're hoping to find a good camp spot soon because we're going to call it a day once we get to a marathon. It's been a really hard day. Um, we're a bit shy of what we wanted to do of 30 miles, so it means we've got to make up tomorrow, hopefully. But yeah, it's been a good day. Tough one. Good. I think that face says it all. We've now done over a marathon. The last few miles was just uphill. It was very painful. But on um, Google Satellite, it looks like there's some nice grassland over here. It's actually a um, car park. Um, let me see what it's called. Uh, Coley Peak. So yeah, I think it's an actual spot where people come to admire the view because there's an incredible vista. Um, so hopefully we can camp there for the night. That's the aim anyway. Just hope it's not a dogging spot. We'll speak to you soon. Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo Have we found our camp spot or oh, what? Look at that. That is amazing. Look at that. Oh my goodness. What we got? The Malvern Hills, 24 miles away. Gloucester, 11 miles away. Uh, River Seven, nine miles away. Ah, uh, 778 feet above sea level. That is amazing. What do you reckon, Chris? That is, that is do you think we found our camp spot? Yeah. I think just think. camp. I think just camp here. That, that is unreal. unreal. I, I think this is actually it's worth a high five for sure. Uh, I think this is actually the best view we've seen on the whole trip yet. And it's on the marathon mark pretty much. I'm gonna get my drone up, get some shots. But yeah, nice, happy.
day bag shot. Just got some amazing drone footage. Sun's just going down. Chris has already almost set up his tent. We've just done under 27 miles today, so the marathon. Nine hours, 20 minutes of walking. Uh, we're gonna set up my tent now, hopefully before it gets dark. And I think we've got a pretty amazing spot for a camp tonight. Hopefully in the morning, it'll be just as spectacular. Thanks for inviting me over to your tent tonight, Chris, Thanks for, for dinner. Thanks for coming. That's all right. I'm, Thanks for joining me. I'm over there. Chris is here. This is our view. This is our dinner. Um, managed to find my lighter. It was in my bag after all. Yeah, so this is my uh, camping stove setup. The little cable that goes over there. And Chris's, his is a bit different. His sits on top of his gas canister um, and he cooks it quite high up. Yeah. I'll show you my camp spot now. <sighs> Pretty good spot. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, so the reason why I've camped here, and Chris will probably dislike me for saying this, but he was snoring quite loud last night. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Um, so hopefully I won't hear it. But I might hear the uh, the wind because it's a bit windy up here. 